for our baptism, call upon our holy God as we make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done. Be not deaf to me. Blessed be you be silent to me. I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. Blessed be the Lord. For he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and in with my song I give thanks to him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. We continue with Kyria. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 56. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for the season, we read responsibly. Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. I ask then, as God rejected his people, by no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order to somehow make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from death? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient, in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And if I could stand for reading the Holy Gospel, we sing the Hallelujah verse. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for proclamation this morning is the gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 15 under the theme, Us and Them. You may have heard the story of a Chinese man and a Jewish man who encountered each other one day on New York Street. 
the Jewish man took one look at the Chinese man and immediately hauled off and slugged the guy, knocking him to the ground. What was that for? The Chinese man asked, rubbing his jaw. For Pearl Harbor, came the reply. But I'm Chinese, the man objected. We had nothing to do with Pearl Harbor. That was the Japanese. Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese are all the same to me, the other man said, and stalked off down the street. The next day, the two ran into each other again. This time, the Chinese man went and slugged off and hit the Jewish guy and knocked him to the ground. What was that for? The Jewish man said. For the Titanic, came the reply. The Titanic? I had nothing to do with the sinking of the Titanic. That was an iceberg. Iceberg, Goldberg, Steinberg, they're all the same to me. The Chinese man replied. How ridiculous prejudice is, yet how commonplace. From the earliest days that men and women have walked the earth, we've had this disturbing tendency to build walls, to separate people one from another. Be they be barriers of race, nationality, religion, or economic status. All of us can claim a share of guilt for maintaining the walls. The walls that separates us from them. And in today's New Testament lesson, we hear of a woman who had the courage to scale one of the walls of prejudice. Jesus and his disciples have crossed over into a foreign country, the land of Tyre and Sidon. That's present-day Lebanon. Matthew doesn't tell us why they've traveled so far out of the way, but it's just possible that Jesus and his friends have gone on a sort of vacation or retreat. I don't know if they have a place like Branson over in Tyre and Sidon. Um, but exhausted from the demands of ministry, the crowds that won't leave them alone, the ceaseless harassment of the scribes and the Pharisees, they just want to get away from it all and go as far as way as they can. But there's no rest for the weary, not even in Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman rushes up to them, begging Jesus to heal her daughter. Now, that may not seem at all unusual. After all, healing people is Jesus' stock and trade, right? But remember who this woman is. She's a Canaanite. And the rivalry between Jews and Canaanites is as old as the hills. Way back in Genesis, we hear Noah curse the Canaanites as the lowest of slaves. An entire biblical book, Joshua, is devoted to telling the bloody saga of Israel's conquest of the land of Cana. That wretched feud survives even today in the ongoing conflict between Israeli and Palestinian. Even more extraordinary is the way this Canaanite woman addresses Jesus, Lord, Son of David. And in using this particular title, she's making a claim that not even the disciples have dared to make. She's identifying Jesus as the Messiah. This woman, this Canaanite woman, is the first one in Matthew's gospel to publicly identify Jesus as who he is. But yet, remarkably, Jesus' response to her is lukewarm, even kind of rude. He seems to want nothing to do with the woman. Without even answering her plea, Jesus turns to the disciples and says to them in a loud voice to make sure she hears it, I was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. Now, to our ears, that sounds kind of harsh, even cruel. Yet in order to understand what's happening here, you have to try to think like a first century Jew. 
to a faithful Jew of that day, Jesus' response to the woman is hardly out of the ordinary. It is, in fact, exactly what a rabbi is expected to say. Virtuous women of that society do not approach men on a public street and speak to them. And more than that, this woman belongs to an unclean race, the Canaanites. There was no rabbi alive in that time who would give such a woman even the time of day. Yet this woman will take no for an answer. Will not take no for an answer. She falls to her knees in front of Jesus and begs him to help her. The worry etched in of her face tells the story anyone needs to hear. Her daughter is sick and she has nowhere to go. This woman will pay any price, will do anything to see her well again. So when Jesus finally speaks to the woman, his words hardly sound comforting. It's not fair, he says, to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And it's this statement of Jesus that is most difficult for modern Christians to swallow. It, it sounds for all the world like a racist remark, and on the literal level it is. You can try to excuse Jesus by observing he's merely reflecting the standards of his day. In much the same way we excuse certain founding fathers of our country who conveniently concluded that all men are created equal did not apply to their African slaves or even to their wives and daughters. But somehow, that's not satisfying. We expect more of Jesus, the Son of God, Yet there's more going on here than an inconsiderate brush-off. Despite his shocking words, Jesus is reaching out to the woman in an extraordinary way. Remember that an Orthodox Jew, uh, in Jewish way of thinking, a rabbi had no business at all talking to a Gentile woman. And in speaking to her on this occasion, Jesus is actually paying her a high honor. He's allowing her to engage him in a theological debate as his equal. Jesus has given her an opportunity to make a theological case for the healing of her daughter. Well, the woman is more than up to the task. Uh, she is ready for Jesus' challenge. And in a clever comeback, she responds, Yes, Lord, Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs from the, that fall from the master's table. So if the Canaanite woman had been debating before a panel of Olympic judges, the cards would all turn up ten. Even the Russian judge would give them a ten. Because that was a pretty darn good response in a debate, wasn't it? Matthew portrays Jesus as the most excellent debater of his age. Yet here Jesus allows a Canaanite woman to get the better of him. And more than that, Jesus is teaching the disciples an important lesson. Just prior to this passage, he's been explaining to the disciples that the scribes and Pharisees' idea of ritual uncleanliness is nonsense. It's not what goes into your mouth that makes a person unclean. He just told them, but what comes out of it. It's not our adherence to the intricacies of the law that God notices, but how we treat other people. And according to the law, Jesus would have done the right thing by ignoring this woman. Instead, he shows the absurdity of the Pharisee's position by arguing it himself and allowing the Canaanite woman to argue the side of justice and understanding. And in doing so, Jesus honors her for her faith. And at the same time, demonstrates to the disciples that all of us are equally deserving in the eyes of God. And with that accomplished, there's nothing more for Jesus to do than tell the woman that her daughter has been healed. 
We could all stand to hear that lesson from time to time, couldn't we? About how we all stand equal before the eyes of God. In the eyes of our Maker, there is no race, there is no gender, there is no ancestral pedigree. There are only believing hearts. Alas, it's so very easy for us to tolerate the walls of discrimination that are so prevalent in our society. There's a famous poem by Robert Frost about the walls we build in life. Something there is that something there is that doesn't love a wall, he writes, looking over at his New England farmer neighbor, who's heaving yet another stone atop the wall that runs between their two properties. The poet asks his neighbor why the wall is necessary. And this is what Frost tells him. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says, good fences make good neighbors. But then the poet is led to wonder. Before I built a wall, I'd asked to know what was I walling in or walling out? See, prejudice exacts a heavy toll on those who practice it, not only on its victims. How many of us suffer from a sudden twinge of unreasoning fear as we pass a person of another race on a deserted sidewalk? Or how many of us wonder what that person who looks a little different is doing in our neighborhood and whether he or she is up to no good. May we all remember that each person we encounter in this life is a child of God, just as we are. There is no them. There's only us. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue our worship as we make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the church. We continue to pray for those who have needs, uh, especially pray for all families that are experiencing spiritual warfare and loss of life and death, uh, loved ones. Uh, we keep in our prayers uh, the family of Elise Kelly, uh, also uh, Gladys uh, Spalding, Angie Shecker's grandmother passed away. I was able to bury my friend Ann on Tuesday, and the death notice from my friend Kenny that I mentioned last week was in the paper this week too. So God, the devil is attacking hard. So let's pray, especially hard this day, for all families, that God would put a shield of protection around them and comfort and strengthen and heal them. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. 
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, a family is a central place where you teach the faith and where we care and love for one another. We know many families are experiencing turmoil and crisis, hurt and a hardship. We ask you, Lord, and lift them up to you, asking you know them to be their comfort and strength. Watch over them, grant them your peace, grant them your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless the congregation and the church, this, this church and this congregation. Grant that it may be a house of prayer, and we a people of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant that the church may steadfastly proclaim your irrevocable gifts and calling, that the disobedient may receive mercy, and that those who hear would become grafted unto Jesus Christ, the true vine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all honest work and occupations, and grant that we may use, the well, use well the fruits of our labors. Give us generosity for those in need. Bless the tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant that the government and those who protect us might keep, it, keep justice and do righteousness for your namesake. Especially, Lord, lift up to, your, to you my son Will as he fights for custody for his daughter this week. And according to your will, your will be done for all those who turn for justice in our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, care for those who cry to you, whether beset with grief, sorrow, pain, or trouble. We especially, Lord, lift up to you uh, those who are battling COVID. Be also with Sidney Carlson, who had a benefit yesterday. Comfort the families of Gladys Spalding, Elise Kelly, and Ann Koopman. Continue to be with those who battle illnesses, including Jolene Lichty, Barb Weeding, Tracy Hedlund, Rachel Coloff, Rick Larson, Beth Martinson, Carolyn Stewart, Alan Bentz, and Jolene Lichty's aunt. Uh, we ask you, Lord, also to be with those who serve us in places that aren't here, like Chelsea Irwin, our missionary in Czech Republic, and the Tim Reichs family attending seminary in St. Louis. And Lord, we ask for success in on the work of the ministry planning and core team as we work to serve you and make plans for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all who are about to receive Christ's body and blood from this altar. Grant that these crumbs from your table may strengthen us in faith and love, united with you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, we ask you to bless those who have birthdays in our parish. We ask your blessings on Steph Drukey, Mary Lowski, Liz Parks, Emma Creasel, Adley Piscina, Delia Sager, Sharon Fox, Sage Hevronic, and Gary Hines. Bless these your servants of special days of celebration. Your bless your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord of love, we ask bless all families and marriages, especially those who celebrate the anniversary of their vows made to you and each other. We ask your blessings upon David and Jonda Jackson, Jesse and Lisa Hevronic in Phil and Audra Parks. May they grow more in love with you and each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Please be seated. The offering plate was in the back of church as you were coming in. And I know there's a few announcements for the coming week. Ladies first, go ahead, Jessica. I'm going to talk about the youth. All 7th through 12th graders, we're going to start next Sunday after church with a Bible study. We're going to do Bible trivia to start off with. And then our official welcome for the 7th graders will be Sunday, September 10th at Ford Park, 530, potluck style. So bring your favorite dish. We're going to do some games and a devotion. And just to let the junior high youth know, I know we've taken the high school kids two times in a row now to higher things. So the junior high kids, we have an opportunity to go to Columbus um, November 4th and 5th for the Nebraska retreat. So be thinking about that. And if you want to go, let Sarah or I know. Um, the early registration is due before October 1st. Okay, good. Exciting things happening with youth. Other announcements. As you're... Uh, reading your bulletin during a sermon, 
Uh, you probably noticed that there was an insert in there, right, uh, for Bible studies. Uh, again, uh, next week is starting Sunday school, right, Janet? And so we look forward to all the kids being there. Adults, this is a great time for you to get involved in Bible study and study of God's Word. Uh, Neil put in the bulletin a little, uh, what do we call that? What's that? Insert that has informa- questions on it. Questionnaire, that's what they call those. They have questions on them. Uh, questionnaire, so uh, we'd, he'd like to be able to do something that you'd like to come to. So uh, please share your intents and what your ideas are for uh, Bible study, and we hope that you'll attend uh, starting next week uh, when Sunday school also starts. Uh, Christ Light will have their kickoff the Wednesday after Labor Day, and uh, look forward to those things happening. Uh, it's us and us working together to share the love of Christ through word, God's Word. So we look forward to those opportunities. Other announcements. Ministry planning meetings tonight. Uh, so hope all the, the groups will be together for that. Um, something special in our, con- in our community. Uh, you heard about the ministerial buying the old, what was it called? Wardrobe. It's now called Samaritan's Closet. Isn't that a good name for a ministerial sponsored event? So Samaritan's Closet is having their grand opening tomorrow. So go by and check it out and um, get some some new stuff that used to be somebody else's stuff and uh, uh, help support uh, the ministry of uh, ministerial as they help those in the community. Uh, Men's Bible study continues on Tuesday mornings and um, uh, Joanne and I will be traveling to Oklahoma uh, the next few days and be back in time for elders meeting Wednesday night. Uh, I know Mrs. Nelson has all good news about her three-year-olds. They're all full now. And uh, open house is a week from tomorrow. So we're grateful for the ministry of, of Lee Preschool, too. Anything I forgot to remember? Do not call me at 3 a.m. when you do remember. And I won't call you at 3 a.m. when I remember. So that would be a good deal. Uh, well, as the offerings are brought forward, then, I invite you to stand and we'll sing the offertory, What Shall I Render to the Lord? <coughs> salutary should all times and all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord for what has been made hidden from been hidden from before the foundation of the world you have made known to the nations in your son in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature you have manifested the fullness of your glory therefore the angels and archangels with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name Evermore praising you and singing.
have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, same night, and he was betrayed, took bread. And we give him thanks, he broke it and gave it to disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same we also took the cup after supper, and we give him thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Don't forget, today there is a door offering, and that is going for, what are we going for today, Lenny? There's a door offering. It's either for missions or failed email. I think it's missions, mission offerings today. So mission offerings today, uh, next week we'll do a door offering for failed email. Receive this blessing uh, from after receiving the Lord's Supper. Now may this precious body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and joy. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we sing the post communicanical Thank the Lord. God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son to the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may say shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon you with favor and give you peace. Uh. Please receive for a closing hymn of Christ our true and only life.